that's nice. This is gonna be like uh, the Walking Dead uh, Telltale series where it's like, they'll remember that. <laughs> Arya will remember that. Uh oh, shit. Attention. The next decision you make will determine your role. There are four options. Custodial, ride operations, merchandise, character acting. All right, I'm gonna stick with merchandise because it's Arya. Just need you to sign this for me and we'll, be, we'll get you outfitted for the day. They extend the clipboard and a pen to you. Something sharp is jammed into your neck and you feel pressure mounting as whatever serum is pushed into your flesh. Everything becomes blurry and like a hungry vignette consuming the edges of a photo, darkness absorbs your sight. You go unconscious. Oh, okay, I see. We're just going straight into the death. What is up, everybody? It's your boy, Antoine Thomas, and welcome your beautiful faces back to Let's Play Mousetrap by Owie. Where we last left off, we've picked our... our... I forgot the name. Our job description. We are a merchandiser. Merchandisee. And uh, we got injected. We signed a wa waiver like an idiot. Uh, and, we, and as soon as we did, we got injected by a big, hulking man with a syringe. Now we are here, back into the game. Wake up. Antoine? Antoine. Come on, Antoine. Can you hear me? Blood red emergency lights throb in the darkness. A large figure is kneeling beside you, speaking to you, with the roaring of the wind and the pounding of the rain. You can barely hear their deep, shaking voice. On top of the storm, a piercing tone screeches from behind your eyes. After a moment, you start processing the words Arya is saying. Antoine, please, tell me that you're alright. Like a hand wiping fog off of a window pane, the urgent and distressed tones of her voice help clear out some of the static numbing your mind. You bring a hand to your forehead. I'd really appreciate it if I could just stop waking up in pain. You expect Arya to chuckle, to say something witty in response. Something. Anything. But her expression is still as serious as the grave. Okay, you're kind of freaking me out. What's wrong? Everything. Okay, dr dramatic. Could you be a little... As you attempt to pull yourself into a sitting position, you feel it wrapped around your torso. Hear it scrape across the concrete floor. As your right hand drifts to the side of your torso, it brushes against something cold and rigid. A thick iron band is secured around your midsection. Welded onto the right side is a small metal box with a keyhole and three glowing dots on top. Four thick chains are also anchored to your band. You tug on the restraint, but it doesn't budge. What? Yeah, I know. I don't want to have to freak you out, but if there's a time to be freaked out, it's now. The last thing you remember is the locker room. Two strangers in a pile of clothing. You signed a waiver and then someone jammed a syringe into your neck. That can't be real, right? You bring your free hand up to your neck as your fingers brush against your skin and a dull ache radiates from the injection site. Your eyes flicked back up to Arya, wide with panic. Do you know what? No, she frowns. I, I have no clue. You start to retreat into your mind, but as you do, your eyes drift downward and you notice Arya's outfit. Arya was wearing a simple t-shirt and jeans the last time you saw her. Now she's wearing a fancy gothic suit like she's an extra in a Tim Burton film. What the fuck are you wearing? Arya glances down. I'm not sure. I can't see much, but it kind of looks like the spooky mansion costume. And why are you wearing that? Antoine, I don't know. I don't remember anything. It, what it felt like seconds. I went from standing in the locker room to waking up here in the stores room. I have no idea why any of us are dressed like this. Any of us. You look down and, as you squint through the darkness, realize that Arya isn't the only one in the costume. You're wearing a gothic outfit nearly identical to Arya's with a vest, jacket, and pants. You're wearing a gothic outfit that's similar to Arya's, but with a four-length skirt instead of trousers. You're wearing a pirate costume with pants. Uh, you're wearing a circus royal. I'm gonna go with gothic, because I like... I, I don't know if you could tell, but I like the gothic look. Uh, you're wearing a gothic... Nearly identical to Arya's with a vest, jacket, and pants. The gothic costumes... Oh, this is another thing? Oh, shit. The gothic costumes are made from rich, dark fabrics and are inspired by Edwardian and late Victorian fashion. This particular costume consists of a tailored overcoat, a waistcoat, and a pair of trousers. 
The ensemble is accessorized with a silver pocket watch, a short top hat, gloves, and a necktie. Oh, that's awesome. Cast members dressed in goth costumes must behave like the gloomy and pessimistic patrons of the spooky mansion while on stage. Oh, and yeah, that's about perfect. Never mind, I'll work with that. Yep, perfect. I'm a gloomy fuck anyway, so it works. For whatever reason, you're dressed like you work at the spooky mansion, as long as thick iron restraints happen to be part of their dress code. An unfamiliar voice emerges from the darkness behind you. Oh, this is fucking weird. Unlock Jovi's profile. You jump away from the figure as they try to sit up. As you move back, the chain pulls taut, and they're lo they lose their balance, slamming back onto the floor with a loud thwack. Ugh, they groan. What was that for? You realize that this is the person from the bus, the one Arya was staring at. They're also in a different outfit now, a noble costume that appears to be made from crimson fabric and trimmed in shimmering gold. Their name tag is pinned to their chest. It's difficult to make out in the dim light, but you think their name tag says Jovi, and below their name, Arecibo Puerto Rico. I'm so sorry to all the people who are who know what, what the fuck that means, or what knows the name of that place. Sorry, Jovi. Ah, uh, forget about it. Look down at your name tag. Antoine, is it? You nod. Okay, Antoine, I'll forgive you if you can tell me why I'm chained to a stranger. You shrug. Sorry, but I could ask the same of you. Oh, well, shit. You look down at the chain connecting you to Jovi and remember that there are four chains anchored to your belt. You turn to face the other direction, and your suspicion is confirmed. Two more people are lying on the concrete. One of the figures is lying on her back, but a, a tricorn that obscures her face from your view. A name tag reading Emerson Johns Hopkins University is pinned to the vest of her pirate costume. The other woman across from you is dressed as a face character, so there's no name tag for you to read. I'm gonna go... Uh, I'm gonna go with... Well, I'm gonna go with woman. Two women, two men. We'll do that. We'll go with this Twisted Fucks game. New character profiles. Okay, uh, them. Okay, oh, okay. So, okay, here we go. Jovi Rivera. Look at this man. He's beautiful. About them. Name, Jovi Rivera. Gender, non-binary. They slash them. I, I gotta be honest, I'm really liking the real The surrealism behind this game is, oh my god, it is so impeccable. Age 24, from Arecibo, Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. Occupation, full-time stage hand and gaffer for the fairy tale kingdom shows. Worked here for two years. Personality, sarcastic, clever, impulsive, daring, and competitive. Their appearance, height, 5'8". Oh, that's around the same height as me. Eyes, dark brown, hair, black, curly, just above shoulder length. Skin, light brown, olive toned. Notable feature, strong brows, tapered jaw, tall nose, costume, royal. Jovi is an acquaintance. Their status, character breaks. Jovi has broken characters zero times. They have three strikes left. Uh-oh. Oh, I don't like that. Sanity. Jovi seems to be okay. You don't know them well, but you noticed if they were behaving strangely. Health. Jovi seems to be in perfect health. Uh, Emerson Leo. Gender. Female. She slash her. Age 21. From Chicago. Or Chicago, Illinois. Role. Custodial. Occupation. Intern. Studies. Creative writing at university. Worked here for two months. Personality inquisitive, dauntless, creative, witty, and methodical. Her appearance, five, six, eyes brown. Her hair, black, straight, long, skin, pale, beige, neutral, toned. Notable features, fuller cheeks, wide nose, up to your eyes. Costume, pirate. Emerson is an acquaintance. Her status, zero, yeah, okay. And then Max Keller. Name, Maxine Max Keller. Gender, female. Age, 26, from Beaufort, South Carolina. Occupation, full-time face character or actor. Normally portrays Mostrosa, villain from Sleeping Beauty. Worked here for six years. Oh, when she was 20. Personality, caring, adaptable, soft-spoken, cautious, and thoughtful. All right, we have to, we have to remember soft-spoken. Her appearance, height, 5'7", eyes, light blue. Hair, dark red wavy, just below shoulder length. Messy. Skin, pale... Beige, cool toned, notable features, high cheekbones, button nose, deep set eyes, costume, Motrosa. Her relationship, approval 50%. Her character, character break in, Max seems to be okay, you don't know her very well, but you, yeah, I'm, I'm perfect. Okay, cool. The woman is dressed as Motrosa, the villain from Sleeping Beauty. She's wearing a dramatic gown that looks like it's made of raven feathers and fine mesh. A long black wig and some dark spikes jutting out of her head to look like a crown of horns. As you look at them, both Emerson and Mocharosa began to stir. Emerson blaringly rubs her eyes, but once her vision adjusts, she backs away from you, slamming her back against the thin metal door. Mocharosa jumps at the sound of the loud crack. <laughs> what? She stammers. 
yeah, whatever. Um, whatever that woman just said, Emerson agrees, gesturing with her hand towards Most Rosa. She narrows her eyes for a second before saying, Oh, right. You can call me Max. Static feedback suddenly pours out of the speaker system, startling you and hurting your ears. A moment later, Dicky and the rat's cheery, disembodied voice launches into a speech. <laughs> oh, are we going to do a Mickey Mouse uh, impression? Oh, welcome, everybody. <laughs> I don't know if I can do it. All right, I'm going to give him a very, very intense voice. Welcome, everybody. We're so thrilled that you decided to spend your evening here with us. We apologize for bringing you here under false pretenses, but you're still doing your job. Tonight's job is just different. Tonight, you'll be playing a game. This game is a very exciting once-in-a-lifetime opportunity that I hope you'll make the most of. You all should know the four pillars that guide us. Safety, courtesy, show, and efficiency. These are the ideological keys to our success. And tonight, they'll also be the literal keys to your success. Scattered around the park are various keys representing each of our core pillars. You must collect all four keys in order, starting with the least important, efficiency, and proceeding up the list to safety. Our number one concern here in Whimsy Parks, once you have a completed set, bring them to Snow White's castle, where you'll have the chance to unlock your freedom and receive your rewards. The first team to make it back to the castle with a full set of keys will receive $250,000. Arya's eyes go wide, Jovi gasps, and Max's jaw drops. Emerson's face scrunches together as she mutters to herself, No, in no fucking way. But remember, Dicky continues, You're still whimsy cast members, and tonight's game is part of your job. You must adhere to the usual rules for behavior and perform the role you're meant to fill. You and your team will be punished if you happen to break character while on stage. Each individual gets three strikes, and on the fourth, it's game over. Your personal items are being held somewhere safe, but you'll find three items to help you tonight attached to your belt along with a map stashed somewhere on your person that will show you where each type of key can be found. You can use these items and whatever else you find to accomplish your objectives. You reach around to the back of your band and find the objectives. They feel like a flashlight, a water bottle, and a knife? Now we get to the fun parts. For each death you directly or indirectly cause, your team will be awarded an additional $250,000. Violence isn't mandatory, but it is highly encouraged. Do whatever you need to survive the night and expect others to do the same. It's also important for us to mention that we've added something to the fine air systems which likely won't have lasting effects on any of you. But it will make tonight's proceedings much more entertaining for us and our guests. Well, best of luck, folks. Hope you have a magical evening. Our fun begins now. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, I love... I don't know if you guys know this. But, 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 hold, hold on, hold on. I don't know if you guys know this, but one of my favorite all-time movies, like, that are horror, my favorite all-time movie is Saw. Okay, Saw is by far, I have, my, my best friend got me this for my birthday, and oh my god, I love him for it. It has all eight movies from, except for, uh, Jinx, or, except for Spiral, the book of Saw, it has all eight movies, in nine movies in here, and it has also Blu-ray and DVD, and I have it as a, as a kept trophy, because it's just by far one of my most favorited movies out there and it's also in a game form if y'all ever want me to play let me know but i'm really excited because this is this is getting my my brain in i also watch squid games the, movies and games like that is what intrigues my brain so much so i'm very happy to play this okay real quick we're gonna go um is there anything new that we gotten facts about your team oh this is new one of your teammates is your friend, Aria, a German student participating in the international version of your internship program. You met Aria two months ago at your orientation, and you worked together at the Marketplace, the main store on High Street, USA. So, I want to look up Mastrosa. 
Mastrosa is the main antagonist of Whimsy's 1954 film Sleeping Beauty, where she is portrayed as an evil witch who curses a young princess after the royal family disrespects her by not inviting her to the girl's birthday party. She predicts that on the day the princess turns 18, she will prick her finger on a spinning wheel and fall into an endless sleep. Despite the kingdom's best efforts, the princess does. Most Rosa turns into a horrific monster to fight the prince, who comes to save her and is defeated in a climactic battle. Recently, Whimsy has been revisiting their classic villains and Motorosa is one of these who they've placed a lot of attention on. She is often paired up with Queen Eris and the villain-centric spin-offs, and the two have an extremely love-hate relationship. Anything new here? Your stats. Sanity, 80%. Well, that's not good. Uh, I haven't broken anything. Your thing's a knife, a water bottle, and a flashlight. They tick in my goddamn phone. Ah, shit. All right, well. Thank you all so much for watching this episode of Mousetrap by Albi. And if you guys did enjoy, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And also, like, this game is by far one of my most intrigued games. I'm actually very excited that I got a chance to play. I'm not sure how much more there is of this. But hopefully you guys are enjoying the mini series that is going on so far. And, um... So far, I've been enjoying it. Again, with the saw thing, I am absolutely loving this to my top, top peaked sincerity. So thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all in another episode. Adios. Deuces.